must have seen or built sand castles in sea beaches. These sand castles are short lived as they are eventually destroyed by sea waves. In this video, we can see that a huge sand castle is being continuously hit by sea waves and is therefore gradually breaking down. So finally, at the end, only a small heap of sand remains. So likewise, this sand castle, the landforms found on the earth's surface are also subjected to natural forces because of which they break down. So this process is known as weathering. In this video, we will study about weathering in details. So now let us define weathering. In this video, we can see that the rocks are broken down due to the action of wind, rain and frost. So this process in which the rocks found on the earth's surface break down or disintegrate into smaller pieces is known as weathering. Also note that the rocks break down into smaller pieces in the places where they are found and due to this reason weathering is also known as in situ process that is the rocks break down in their original place where they are found and due to this reason weathering is known as in situ process. So what is weathering? Weathering is the breaking down and disintegration of rocks in the same place. In the previous video, we saw that the rocks were breaking down due to the action of frost, rain and wind. So these factors that causes weathering are known as agents of weathering. Now, apart from frost, rain and wind, there are other factors that causes weathering and they are plants, animals, human beings or human activities like deforestation. Apart from this, there is also another natural factor that is temperature changes that causes weathering. Now, the influence of these agents on different rocks are not the same and due to this reason, weathering is also of different types. We will learn about different types of weathering later. Apart from the previous factors, weathering also depends on other factors like topography of the land. Now topography means the relief features like a mountain may have a steep slope or a gentle slope. On steep slope, weathering is quite intense because the rock particles move down the steep slope quite swiftly and due to this reason, the rock fragments break into smaller particles very rapidly. While on gentle slope, weathering is not that much prominent. This is because the rock particles move down the gentle slope quite slowly and due to this the rock particles do not break down into smaller particles. So we can say that weathering is quite intense or more rapid on steep slope rather than on gentle slopes. This is how weathering depends on the topography of the land. Now let us learn about another factor on which the weathering of rock depends. The rocks found on the earth's surface are not uniform throughout. Some rocks like mudstone, cleatstone, etc. are very soft, while other rocks like granite are very hard. Now, soft rocks are easily weathered by winds because soft rocks are quite soft and it is very easy to attack them while the hard rocks are very hard, strong and resistant and therefore it is not easy to attack the hard rocks. Therefore, the hard rocks are not easily weathered by winds. See, in this video, we can see that the soft rocks are broken down into small pieces while the hard rocks are not broken down into small pieces. This is because the hard rocks cannot be easily weathered by winds. So, the soft rocks are easily weathered by strong winds rather than the hard ones. Thus, the weathering of rocks also depends on the structure of rocks. Now, before we move on, can you help me to answer these? We have to state whether the following statement is true or false. 
The hard rocks are easily weathered by winds. Is the statement true or false? Well, the statement is false because we just read that the hard rocks are not easily weathered by winds because they are quite strong and resistant and therefore it is not easy to attack the hard rocks. Now let us watch an activity. In this activity we can see that a paper is being torn into pieces. What happens? We get smaller pieces of the paper. Now the paper is being burnt. What happens? The paper turns into ashes. So in the first case when the paper was torn into pieces it was a physical change because there was just decrease in the size of the paper while in the second case when the paper was being burnt it was a chemical change because the paper underwent a chemical reaction because of which it turned into ashes. So ash is a new product that was formed so it was a chemical change. So, in the previous activity, we saw that when the paper was torn into smaller pieces, it was a physical change because there was just decrease in the size of the paper. Similarly, when the rocks present on the earth's surface break down or disintegrate into smaller pieces, it is physical weathering. Now, physical weathering is same as physical change because as we can see in this picture the rocks just break down into smaller pieces. So only the size of the rocks changes and there is no change in the chemical composition of the rocks. So physical weathering is similar to a physical change where only the size of the rocks changes but there is no change in the chemical composition of the rocks. However, if the rocks undergo a chemical change, that is if the chemical composition of the rocks changes, then it is known as chemical weathering. Chemical weathering is very similar to a chemical change. In the activity, we saw that when the paper was burnt, it turned into ashes and it was a chemical change. So, there was a change in the chemical composition of the paper. Similarly, if the chemical composition of the rocks changes, then it is a chemical weathering. See, in this picture, we can see holes in the rocks and also a change in the color of the rocks. This happens due to chemical weathering. So, this picture represents chemical weathering. So, in this video, we understood the meaning of weathering. What is weathering? Weathering is the breaking and disintegration of rocks in the same place. Weathering happens due to different factors which are known as agents of weathering and they are rain, frost, wind, temperature changes and human beings, plants and animals. Apart from this, weathering also depends on the topography of the land and the structure of rocks. Finally, we read that weathering can be of two types, physical weathering and chemical weathering. In our next video, we will discuss about these different types of weathering in details. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now